I was an avid reader until the age of 13, and then I stopped for 10 years. Hello, my name is Chloe. Welcome to my channel where I document my journey learning to love reading again. In this video, I'm going to take you through the books that have got me into reading again, starting from the first book I read after a really long time until the book that I read most recently. So these were kind of pivotal in my re-loving reading journey and I'm going to talk a little bit about why each one was important and just like talk about the books in general as well. Kicking things off, we've got Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. I didn't want to set myself lofty goals, I kind of just was recommended this book, read it, enjoyed it. So this book is about a young black babysitter called Amira who works for this woman called Alex. Alex is white so that's an important part of the dynamic and Alex is wealthy and she's a hotshot and she's also pretty, she sees herself as pretty pretty woke. I think she's kind of a bit of a feminist writer I believe. And there is, there are a few other characters in the book and there is a bit of like an element of mystery I guess. It's not a mystery book but it's definitely a book that has surprises in it. As you've probably gathered the central themes are kind of race and privilege and I do think I was incredibly impressed by how it dealt with these topics. Like in a sense the book was really light-hearted but equally I think it explored quite a few of the kind of nuances of those topics. So it's a really good one for just kind of making you think in a slightly different way and in particular just how it demonstrates that like nothing is black and white. I think with this book when I've discussed it with friends I've enjoyed how different a lot of our opinions have been around it and how each of us have kind of assessed each character. And yeah, it's just compelling, it's well written, the writing style is really accessible, as I said, especially considering like the topics it's dealing with. So I think that was, it was all round a really good one to kick me off. And it was, as I said, it was recommended to me, which I think was part of the key. A huge part of me not reading was because I just had no reason to. I found it so hard to choose a book and stick with it. So even once I'd worked myself up to like actually, I was like, okay, I'm gonna get back into reading. I would start reading a book and I didn't really like it. And so I stopped reading it. So being kind of given a book and been like, read this so we can talk about it together or just read this because I liked it was a really good way to do that. So that's probably my tip number one is, get. Yeah, I didn't realize I'd be giving tips throughout this video, but I guess I am, is ask your friends what books they enjoy and just go from there. So the book that I read next was Little Fires Everywhere. This book I believe has been made into a film. It won a lot of things as well in 2017 when it was published and again I think it was a recommendation. It's about a woman named Mia Warren who is an artist and single mother to her daughter per, per, Claire, I was about to say Claire, Pearl and they move to a idyllic suburb but it's kind of Ooh, not all is as it seems. Ooh, surprising. Sorry, I'm being sarcastic. It's actually a really good book. So they move to the suburb and they meet Eleanor Richardson and she's kind of the town goody-goody and there's kind of beef between them. And then there's a lot of mystery around them and there's this custody battle. Like, it sounds really chaotic, but very easy to read, very interesting. I believe the opening, it's one of those books where it kind of opens with the dramatic scene and then it spends the rest of the book like describing what happened up until then, which I mean I'm a sucker for that, like who doesn't find that an interesting way to start a book? If you're one of those people don't don't let me know. So maybe this is my second lesson because I'm learning lessons apparently. I think don't be afraid to just go for something that is really really guaranteed compelling like this hook up front, a bit of mystery. Maybe I'm just pretentious but I like to see myself as someone who loves a book for like not you know, not the story. Like, I don't, I'm not about what happens in the end. I'm about the experience while you're reading it. And I think that's an acceptable way to enjoy a book. That's how I enjoy a lot of books. But I think just leaving that snobbery at the door and getting into a book that has really obvious mystery and you're kind of there to see what happens at the end. It's a good thing if the writing's good too, but 
yeah, just chilling out, enjoying a book for what it is. So the third book that I read, and I'm excited to gloat about it because it was a classic, Far From The Madding Crowd. So we're talking big, thick book with tiny words. I was feeling confident at this point. I had tried to get into this book. I think this was actually the book that over my 10 years I kept trying to get into, but I just wasn't getting hooked. So lesson number three around this book is if you are a child who thought that classics were the only respectable thing to read because that snobbery was instilled in you growing up, um, stop trying to read classics. Just like read them eventually, but you do have to build yourself up to them. Yeah, maybe you can dive into a classic after 10 years of not reading, but you want to have a good base of just like the discipline to open a book and even just the stamina like reading stamina is a thing. So just leave your ego at the door and don't read a classic until you, until you're warmed up, you know? Anyway, I think I was wavering at one point because the thing with classics, sometimes they're so like dense and they're so complicated. A, you just look at it and you're like, I have made no progress. Um, and I've spent so much time on it and that can feel really disheartening. Uh, but also, especially the, the beginning of classics, before you've really properly met the characters and before you're comfortable with them. I think they can be really daunting. A lot of them start with just like chapters upon chapters of scene setting, like huge paragraphs describing the scenery or the people. And I just think that can be really off-putting if you're not in the like right mindset. Having said all that, I really enjoyed this. So Far From The Madding Crowd is about <laughs> I put a quote in because it kind of amused me. Independent and spirited Bathsheba Everdeen has come to Weatherbury to be a farmer after inheriting a massive farm slash estate. So she arrives, loads of guys fall in love with her. They're kind of very different types of guys. And so that's kind of interesting in itself. But then she's also someone who's very lonely. She's definitely a bit of a tomboy, a bit of a pick me. <laughs> Would Bathsheba be pick me? Either way, she's very tomboy. She has no friends apart from her servants, but she has a bit of a sense of humor. It actually leads her into some sticky situations, which you'll find out when you read it. Quite a lot happens. There's a bit of drama, a bit of sadness, a bit of everything. I was really intimidated, but I was pleasantly surprised. You just have to sort of get into it. Something else that surprised me was that Bathsheba was described like a whole person. So this book was published in 1874 and she was kind of like a whole flawed human being who was portrayed as like intelligent in ways and like she wasn't just someone with like pert milky breasts, which I feel like is how a lot of women get described. I think even like modern literature the ways that women are described is really abysmal. So I just think it's like quite embarrassing that a book published in the 1870s is more progressive in that sense than a lot of books these days. Anyway, this book instilled me with a huge amount of confidence. I feel like if you can tackle a big chunky classic, you can tackle anything. But also if you don't enjoy classics, don't feel a pressure to. The next book that I moved on to. Hello party people, this is editing Chloe here. I skipped a page in my notes and so I forgot to talk about this book, Girl, Woman, Other. So this book's described as a love story to modern Britain and black womanhood and I thought it was an excellent read. It's about 12 different characters which sounds very overwhelming but it's written such that it's quite it's quite clear kind of each char each chapter is very distinctly about each character so I wouldn't be intimidated by that and they're all very different and it's just about their stories, their kind of journeys. I'd recommend it and it's also fun because a lot of it is around like London and specifically Brixton, South London. Um, always cool to read about like places that you know. So I read I'm Glad My Mum Died by Jeanette McCurdy, which is a memoir by Jeanette McCurdy, <laughs> surprising, who is a former iCarly star. I actually never watched iCarly and I never heard of Jeanette McCurdy before reading this book, but social media was ramming down my throat loads of like interviews and extracts. Loads of the reviews were also really good. I was like, I must know. And obviously the title is so enticing, so intriguing. It's a big, big statement. This book I absolutely love. It's a really 
hard book to read because it's really full of a lot of incredibly traumatic things. Jeanette describes how she was abused in a lot of different ways by her mother growing up and also by the people that she worked with as a as a child star. She's a really really good writer. She pinpointed feelings really well and one thing that I thought was incredible was that she spoke as though she is the age that she was at the time. So the book describes from kind of six until maybe her late twenties and when she's a six-year-old the book writes, it doesn't just use the language of a six-year-old, it also uses like the trains of thought and some people criticise um, the book for not really having the reflection and the kind of the, the natural like self-reflection that you get from like an in hindsight type memoir but I just thought it was really really powerful especially around such like complex relationships and it really showed you how insidious abuse can be and how desperate she was for like her mother's love and it, it is just a really good book. I also think um, it talks about grief. So I lost my mum to cancer when I was 18 and it really showed the complexities of grief and she was kind of like, I'm glad my mum died, she was terrible and I just really enjoyed that because it, it's just that whole thing of like there is no right way you should be feeling. Next book, Malibu Rising. I think after I'm glad my mum died I was on a bit of a like, a bit of a okay, okay contemporary young hip books that I see all over social media. So I read Malibu Rising, which if you don't know, is about, when's it set? It's set in the 1980s, so I'm really bad with like dates and like, like I could have said anything within, oh my legs are So it's set around Nina River, actually again with this book, similar to Little Fires Everywhere, it does that thing where it kind of, in the first few paragraphs or the first chapter, it like tells you about a really dramatic thing that happens later and then it goes back to the beginning and you kind of work towards the dramatic thing. Nina River is preparing for a party, a big famous annual party at her Malibu beach home. She's a celebrity, she's wealthy and she has three siblings who are also kind of celebs. Their mum isn't around, you get that pretty early on and neither is their dad. They're sort of older at this point, they're at, at the point that the book's actually set. They're like 18 and over. And the father isn't around because he is a, in my opinion, terrible person. Definitely a bad father. He is a legendary singer and he basically actually very, very early on kind of left them with their mother who then struggled with her own like issues. And they kind of, they had a pretty bad time, but I just, really like this book was so fun and that's how I describe it like it was a really fun book to read and Taylor Jenkins read she just writes in such an interesting way and she does she like weaves a bit of bit of stuff in there like a bit of meaty stuff in there but it's always just like so you just don't want to put the book down this was like really accelerated my reading love or re re-emerging reading love sorry my like no it explored the sibling relationships quite intensely and that was interesting. I have three siblings, so I'm a sucker for some sibling relationship stuff, media. Anyway, the next book I read was the other Taylor Jenkins Reid book that I've read, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So this book, if you're forcing me to rate them, I think this book is better than Malibu Rising. I think a lot of people would agree with that. So this book is about a really famous, there are a lot of famous people in Taylor Jenkins Reid's books. Oh, also actually, loads of the characters like link together, like they're all from the same, u okay. Hi, sorry, I'm sitting on my bed now. It's quite creaky in, cr in, cr in case the bed creaks. So sorry about that if it creaks. Because <laughs> my legs gone numb and I'm just trying to revive it. Oh, let me give you a tea check. I actually didn't drink any tea or show you my tea for the whole thing. I'm doing, I'm in the moon mug again. This is clearly my like filming mug. Uh, this is my chamomile tea. It's actually really, it's like proper chamomile blossoms. Would recommend if you like, didn't realize those existed. You can just have dried chamomile blossoms. Anyway, we're actually, we are almost done. We are almost done, so just bear with me. As I said, I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and this was like very, it was similar to Malibu Rising but it was more about this like older film star and she is basically very private, a lot of mystery surrounds her and she wants to write a tell all. All the journalists are trying to get it and she gives it to this one seemingly totally random journalist 
and the book is about this journalist visiting her house and Evelyn Hugo, the film star, talking to her about her life. So realistically most of the pages are filled with like stuff about Evelyn Hugo's life uh, and you kind of read it as though like that's the actual universe it exists in instead of like the the timeline where you're later in, you know what I mean. So I described it as an enjoy, I think I gave it four stars, an enjoyable exploration of morality in a juicy and easy to consume package. And I really stand by that. Like Evelyn's not a, not a hero and she's also not a villain, or at least that's how I ended up interpreting it. Like it's really unclear as to where, where you stand with her. Uh, but then at the same time, you're like empathizing loads with her because she's telling you all about her life and you're like, okay, fair enough, you know, fair enough. Um, but then she's also like, oh, I did this terrible thing. And you're like, you know, I feel like this is one of those books where like, it's not, it's not trying too hard, but you kind of, you finish it feeling so like fulfilled. And I just had a real kind of zest for life after finishing. I don't know whether it's because of just the setting. Like, I don't know whether it's just this whole thing of like someone being interviewed about their life makes me get all like emo but if you're looking to get out of a slump read this book first for anyone who's actually read taylor jenkins read let me know what i should read next from her i was between carrie soto is back but then i've seen daisy jones and the six has been made into a film um, and it's it, i mean it's fun to read books and then see it in films especially just like comparing characters and how they look in the film versus your head um, is I just find that sort of thing really enjoyable. This is the final book that I'm going to talk about in this video and I think it needs a whole video in itself and that is Fleabag the Scriptures. So if you've never heard of Fleabag um, or you just don't know what it's about, it is about a woman in her early 30s who is just going through it. Her mum has died and then her best friend has also um, died quite recently. I've watched the TV show twice and it's perfect. I love it. I, like every time I watch it something I like learn something new or I feel very differently about it or like the first time I watched it I definitely like if you asked me what it was like what genre it fitted into after I would say it was a comedy. I mean, I think it's a dramedy at the end of the day, but I definitely, the second time I watched it, appreciated it on a completely different level. Um, and the, all the stuff around like grief and family dynamics and the drama of it and like the sadness resonated with me a lot more. And then reading the scriptures, the incredible thing about them is that they are like the TV adaptation. They're the script from it. So you see like hard cut to this, hard cut to that. And A, it's fun because it's just seeing how like these, the show was brought to life and seeing how, I mean, I was so in awe of like A, the fact that people are able to write these things, write these scripts that just like come to life and they're perfect. Like you've got to have such a vivid, quite visual imagination, I think. But then you also get more of an impression of what the intention is in terms of people's expressions and people's appearance. I know it's like the wrong way around, but I actually am so glad that I saw the show before I read the book because the book, you know, s describes someone as like, oh, this person is a bit of an asshole or like says this in an arsey way. <laughs> That's an example, it's like a bad example, sorry. But then obviously the TV show, like you you have to interpret it that way. And there were definitely some like loads of similarities, but there were some differences like in the way that I interpreted it. And then you're kind of like, okay, am I just seeing it differently? Or did the actor play this character in such a way to like leave a bit of ambiguity or did they interpret it differently, you know? I quite, I just like that like it gets lost. The message gets lost in the mix a little bit. Fleabag's extraordinary and I'm sorry for rambling about it. But yeah, that was the book that really solidified my love for reading. If I actually really want to read more like TV script adaptations, I'm not sure if that's just like a hip hop happening thing that that's recently started happening or whether it's or whether it's a legit like thing that a lot of books have I don't know let me know let me know if you know more than me which isn't hard to be fair I ramble horribly and I'm so sorry my Goodreads review my final comment is Fleabag the scriptures is a hilarious painful hopeful look at grief and human relationships I've watched the TV show twice and this is my first time reading the book. Each encounter with Fleabag uncovers a new lair and leaves me devastated in a different way from the last. I already cannot wait to see what I discover next time. Phoebe Waller-Bridge is a genius. I, lo I loved reading it. I, I, I loved it so much and 
like that's what reading should be. It should be enjoyable in the same way that like watching TV is enjoyable. Possibly even more so because you were just so, it's so immersive. It's just a totally different experience and I am so excited to be back and enjoying it and if you're not there yet don't feel guilty like it's hard it's hard to get back into it other than that i hope you have a lovely week and are there any books that you would recommend to like help someone get back into reading because i think that's that's an interesting one and it would be fun to like compile a list of those books and just know like why like why they what's the magic what's the magic okay anyway sorry enough from me have a nice evening goodbye